here we go. Welcome to Just Curious Media. This is Let's Talk Movies, and I'm Jason Connell. On the show today, I'm joined by special guest, Alexandra Paul. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, this really is nice a real a real pleasure, I have to say. This is a movie that I watch quite frequently. I'm a huge John Carpenter fan. And as Let's Talk Movies has grown, this is our logo here. And let me bring up the movie we are discussing, Christine. I'm now bringing on more people and just to do, it's, it's a celebratory podcast. We're not here to bash anything. We're here to remind people that there's some great movies from the past that they should A, revisit, or if they've never seen it, like another generation, there, there's more reason to do so. And I reached out to you. You got back to me, Alexander, so fast. It was unbelievable. So thank you for writing me back. I was like, oh, yeah, it's great. Now we, you know, we schedule it like two months in advance, but I love that. I, I, yeah. Most people, it's like crickets. You never hear back and then you got to keep going. So this is a true pleasure for me, I have to say. Uh, oh, I always respond. I might sometimes respond no to folks, but I, I, I respond if I get it. And I try and respond quickly, mostly because I'm neurotic. I don't like having uh, a lot of, Things in your that inbox. I just, yes, exactly. So <laughs> well, my inbox is at zero at the end of each day. I, oh. I, I, I strive to do that. <laughs> Bravo. Yeah. Well, you're not only in Christine playing Lee Cabot, which we're going to mainly explore. But if you have fun today, we can come back another time and explore some of the other movies like American Flyers, which I love that movie directed by John Badham. Saturday Night Fever, War Games, Short Circuit, and of course, it's got Kevin Costner in it. I mean, you were fantastic in it. I saw that on HBO so many times, but so there's that one, Eight Million Ways to Die. Dragnet was a huge movie. Sunset Grill, Sharknado 4, mind you. Oh, yes. The fourth Awakens. <laughs> Awakens. I was actually walking my dog one day in, I, it was in Pasadena or Altadena and came across the production. I don't know if it was the day you were shooting, but there was like a water tower scene. I was like, what are you guys shooting? And I saw in the truck and they had sharks everywhere. So I, I really want to hear about that sometime. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. Look, if, if David Hasselhoff and Gina Lee Nolan are going to be there, I, I'm going to be there. And you know, <laughs> Exactly. So it was very fun. I've, I've, as I've aged, I've really gotten much more of a sense of humor about things. And I'm much, I'm really open to saying yes, but it has to have, it has to have one, it has to either be working with great people, a yep. great, great dialogue or part, um, a great message yeah. or um, a lot of money. It has to have at least one of well, those things. That is uh, some good rules to go by, yeah. I have to say. And if I it like doesn't that. have those things, then it's a no. But if it does have at least one of those things, I'm like, sure, why not? Yeah. As long as it doesn't go against my own values, then yeah. I'm, I'm easy. So. Have you worked on some that have all three? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of things. I've been very fortunate. Uh, I've been so lucky in my career. Yeah. Well, well, speaking of your career, just a few TV things. Now, I think it was one episode, but Mad Men is one of my favorite shows of all time. So I didn't even yeah. spot you on that until I was researching you yesterday. Melrose no, you Place. wouldn't spot me. It was, it was you know, quick. when they, yeah, it was, I, I played Duck's wife, ex-wife. Oh, Yes. Um, I have one scene, but when you're, when you read for it, when you audition, yep. you have no idea what you, what you're auditioning That's for. Right. They don't give you the sides that have the correct characters or anything or scenarios. Yeah. And then you go to the reading and you find out, oh, oh, okay. I have one scene. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> or it. I have, yeah. yeah. It was like, they said, maybe it could be recurring. And I don't know if it's because I was so terrible or they just decided no, that they did no. not recur it. So no, no, I was fine. I was fine, actually. I, uh, um, I thought I, uh, it, was a, it was a great experience being on that show. That's funny. I have a few friends. One was a soccer buddy. I played a lot of soccer in LA and uh, he was on there. He was someone's um, brother. He's like in five or six episodes. Oh, and cool. I forget whose brother he was, Pete, Pete's brother, one of the main guys. Oh, so yeah, he, Pete. He'd pop yeah. on every once in a while as his brother. And then I met another actress at one of my film festivals, and she was on there. And then I, ran, I met Duck at a Starbucks one time and had a chat with him in real life. I was like, you're Duck on you know, Mad Men because the show was still going. And so there, there's our, our connection right there. And uh, his storyline was really great. And he's fantastic. Yeah. 
by the way. Nice so. man. And by the way, everybody, uh, that show is really authentic because they for I had one scene and I didn't even take my coat off. I come into the office and I talk <laughs> to him about the kids and going to a play. And it's a switch off between our kids, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. Handing the kids over to him. And uh, he's knowing he has an alcohol problem. So I yep. mention it uh, subtly and that annoys him. Um, and even though I never took my coat off, I was wearing garters, the uh, <laughs> stockings from the time, shoes from the time, a bullet bra from the time. Oh my God. I had a, a slip on, which nobody wears now, thank God, but everyone wore a slip under dresses or skirts until the 80s. And yeah, the whole shebang. Uh, and who would and, know? You have and a no coat dress. On the whole time. No, I'm kidding. I had a dress on and then the coat. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> so and oh, and the hairstyle too. They were oh really, yeah. They were looking at catalogs in the hair and makeup room just of that year oh uh, to see what was what hairstyle would they pick for me and was it the <laughs> fall or the summer? It was really very impressive. The oh my god! There. You know what? Let's just talk about Mad Men. Let's just hold this <laughs> to the I could go on all day. Well, that's fantastic, fantastic. And you were on Melrose Place quite a bit, but mm -hmm. then of yes. course last season, the last yeah. season. Mm -hmm. But you really made waves, no pun intended, on Baywatch. Yes, Stephanie Holden. You were on like almost a hundred episodes of Baywatch. I mean, that's. And unbelievable, you and Hasselhoff. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. a ton of episodes, tons of seasons. What an incredible ride that must have been. I would love to explore that on a, I'll have to make another podcast called Let's Talk TV so we could explore that. But uh, yeah, any takeaways? I mean, that that had to catapult you in so many ways to have that kind of visibility on a show that, that was that popular. Yeah, for your younger viewers, uh, Baywatch was a television series that was ridiculed here in the United States at the time when it was on from 1989 to 2001. So it had a dozen yeah. years it was on television, but uh, it was beloved all over the world, the rest of the world. And it was the number one show in the world, the first show to ever really be, it was really actually seminal in ways that people don't really realize in that yeah. In terms of global trade, which was opened up in the 90s, Baywatch epitomized that in terms of the entertainment industry because it was the first television series that was really showing episodes almost simultaneously across the world. Right. Um, wow. Before that, American television shows would end up, you know, in different countries maybe a year later, et cetera. Yeah. No, not so with Baywatch. So that was um, that that was really a breakthrough. Um, it sort of uh, brought the montage into oh, television. Yes. Yeah, the slow <laughs> and, <laughs> Yes. And also was shown in a lot of countries that really didn't, um, you know, that, that really wouldn't have allowed that content like Iran sure. or China. Yeah. It was the first, it was the first actually tele American television series into mainland China. Wow. So yeah, it was, a, it was, a, and, and it was an amazing experience. I love it. I loved doing it. I loved being on it. I loved all the actors on it. It was such an amazing, I'm sure. I've done over a hundred projects and I have to say that Baywatch is my very favorite. Um, Hit all three. Important to me. Y yeah, no, actually, actually it wasn't, we weren't paid much at all. I was paid very, very little, wow. but I had a very liberal contract. We only shot five months a year because we shot so quickly. It was such a low budget series, actually. And, wow. you know, you're outside most of the time. You're on the beach. You already have all the all the um, right. background and yeah. <laughs> the sets. Um, but uh, and, and I could go off. I also could go off and leave and do another series. Uh, sorry, wow. another television show for at least a month during the if yeah. I wanted, which I did a couple times. Um, and uh, it was just such a great experience and now all those americans who kind of scorned and sort of laughed when they would come up to me and say oh are you are you in that show baywatch <laughs> i don't watch it but and, and, yeah. and they would always try and say and in other countries everyone was always so excited they never tried to distance themselves from oh. it and now um for 30 years later 30 almost 35 years later uh, from when i was on um People don't do that anymore because it's gotten kind of cool. It's yeah, so exactly it's kind of gotten kitschy. <laughs> That's <laughs> so great. If you're around long, and and it's it's had so many spinoffs. You know, it went on oh, for yeah. seasons. Was yeah. heavily maligned by Hollywood, but it has had you know it's replaying on Amazon now. It's got its own mm -hmm. its own channel on 
Pluto, I think. And then there was a movie made with The Rock based on it. Yep. And there's going to be I a know documentary the director of that series movie. Yeah. coming out. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's really, and now they're rebooting it. So there, it's it's had a chill. Well, I didn't know that. Breaking news here on Let's Talk Movies. They're rebooting Baywatch, the show. A new series is coming. Yes, is yes. Right? And that's because this is Let's Talk Movies, not Let's Talk TV. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah, I yeah. know you would have had it. We would have been all over it. I've been all over it. Well, that is fantastic. Really a fantastic. We'll have to get into more of that later. But a lot of your success had to have started here. At least some of it. Christine, this movie had to open up some doors for you. I'm only assuming. I mean, you know, I was so, I was 19 when I shot that film and it was wow. the first my first feature film. I had done a television movie called right. Paper Dolls that had been very successful. Um, but it was the first feature film that came out after that. And I didn't know anything about the business. I didn't even know who John Carpenter was. I didn't watch. I knew wow. Stephen King. Okay. I didn't I'd never read any of his books, but I did read the book after I got the part. Uh, um, and I thought it was great. Okay. Um, but Terrifying. I, didn't, I mean, I knew of John Carpenter, but I hadn't seen a lot of his things. I really didn't know. I was just excited to get a part. Yeah. I didn't see the big picture and certainly never. None of us ever, I don't think, thought that it would have this kind of legs now. 40, it's 40 years. It's been 40 yeah. years since I've taped it, and uh, filmed it. And uh, so I'm sure that it helped me, yes, because what was the, I think American, I don't remember what, I did a series of TV movies after Christine and then yeah. Flyers I think came I might out have done American. Yeah, and this but came out in 83. Yeah. It was filmed in 84. Right. Right. Uh, so I I think it probably helped me get American Flyers. Yeah, for sure. And then Dragnet and 8 Million Ways to Die and, and all those other ones that you mentioned. I definitely had a film career in the first 10 years of my career from 18 to 28. And then right. when I went on to Baywatch um, um, TV, TV, which at that time was really, yeah. you know, they thought, oh, you know what, you're never going to get out of TV. But I had a manager who said, you know, Alexandra, a lot of the independent films that you're doing are financed by German money. And Baywatch is very popular in Germany. So I recommend that you do this. And then it will help your independent film career, which I was moving, which I was doing a lot of independent films. Wow. And um, so, yeah, so for better or worse, I don't regret it at all. But I think, um, yeah, who knows what it did to my movie career. My feature film, big feature film career. I don't, I don't know. It certainly gave me legs, though longevity. And you know, if you're still oh, working yeah. as a woman in your fifties, it's something to be grateful for. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Christine, here's a synopsis again for the newbies or those who forget. A nerdish boy buys a strange car with an evil mind of its own, and his nature starts to change to reflect it. And I got to say, having watched this movie a lot and now watching it more for notes or just an outline yesterday, this movie is fantastic. It holds yeah. up. It's truly terrifying. And the character arc, and we'll get into your character as well, Lee, who's great. But Arnie is to, to see him go from nerd to this demon character. It's a wonderful part, you know, and I thought he, the kid, um, uh, the kid, listen to me, um, not Stockwell, but Keith Gordon. Keith, Keith Gordon. Keith is Gordon amazing. did it. Oh, yeah. he did an amazing job and amazing. he has so many fans from it. He's such a good actor. And you know, just for folks, I mean, I'm sure a lot your your um people listening and seeing this podcast, they they know this, but we shoot out of order. So when you yep. have a character that transitions like Keith Keith did as Arnie, it's not easy because you might right. be being the nerdy boy mm -hmm. in the morning. And then the next scene, you've got to be the coolest cat in the school. Right. And that that's a, and and then maybe not the, and go back. Maybe, yeah. And then go back or not even the coolest cat, maybe becoming the so, coolest somewhere cat. in the middle. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah, so and then where he goes to the end is like the extreme. I'm, I'm assuming some of that stuff was shot. The ending was later in production with all the demolishing. Yeah. That's probably yeah. back ended. Okay. Yeah, yeah but, but I the was, end was shot at the end because we okay. had to ruin. We had to, to ruin demolish, a bunch of stuff. As you said yeah. so many cars. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so many of the. So Christine, folks, is a car, by the way. Yes, not yes. not my character, although I do play the. Well, the second female lead, if you want to count Christine as the lead, yeah. uh, I play the human lead. Lee. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, it came out December 9th, 1983, which I didn't see it when it came out. I probably caught it on video. I was quite young, but 
that's crazy. Like this is a Christmas movie. <laughs> it's like, this seems like it would have come out in the summer at this day and age, but whatever. It came out in December horror thriller yeah. and um, John Carpenter. Not only did he direct it, but he does this. Com he composes music for it. He's so good at that. He did the Halloween score. He's got, I mean, let's watching it again yesterday and that, the, the score I want to listen to on Spotify now, it's fantastic. Eerie. When you see Christine, you see headlights. It's kind of like Jaws. You look in the water and just know Jaws is there. Well, you just see headlights and the road and a lot of those POV shots. It's just, you can tell this is a pro. He'd already done Halloween, The Fog, Escape from New York, and The Thing. And then he does Christie. And the thing, by the way, which I was watching something yesterday, him talking, the thing, I guess, wasn't a hit, which is crazy to believe that now because it just is, you know, everyone loves the thing. They've embraced it and they've made sequels and are prequels. And then he goes on to do Starman, Big Trouble in Little China, They Live, Escape from L.A., and so many more. So I have to ask you, Alexandra, what was it like working with this legendary director? As, as as I mentioned, I wasn't aware of his legendary sure, know. <laughs> but I did, at that time, I really did look, I'd worked with Ed Zwick right before, yeah. and Ed Zwick is a very, he's won Oscars for his work sure. as a producer, and he directed Glory, which I don't know if it won, I think it won Best Picture, but it certainly won Denzel Washington and Oscar, um, but he, so I, I really had worked with, he was amazing as a director, and John was, I really looked up to John as like a father figure to kind of lead me through. So yeah. I was very, quite dependent on him. I don't think he was very uh, used to that, having a, a young girl wanting his advice and, and guidance as much. Hmm. Um, he's not really that, that kind of director. He and Keith conferred a lot about his character, but um, I was, and I was also a little intimidated by him, but he was so nice on the set, really nice and had okay. a very happy set because he works with a lot of the same people. Yeah, right. Which that makes sense. And by then he, he's made some great movies. And of course the writing has a lot to do with the, a great movie, the novel, Stephen King. I've read so many of his books, never read Christine for some reason. Now I, I, I need to go do so because maybe there's scenes in there that just didn't translate to the screen. I'm sure or the screenplay, which was yeah. written by uh, Bill Phillips. You said you did read Christine. What was your takeaway? I really liked the book. I was like, wow, this isn't too scary. The reason I hadn't seen a lot of Stephen King movies was, well, I didn't grow up with a lot of movies because I lived in the country in New England. So we just didn't go to movies. And my mother severely re restricted television. So I didn't watch much television either. Um, <clears throat> but uh, and yet you I, became I, I an actor. Big, yeah, <laughs> much to crazy. her chagrin, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it was not the, uh, the uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't up to her standards <laughs> being an actress, but um, it is now, luckily. She yeah. overcame that bias. She wanted me to, I don't go to college actually, which I never did because I started working as an well, actor. You were working um, on this movie at 19. <laughs> that's right. I was a big reader though, really yeah. big reader because when you grow up in the country, you either go outside sure. and play, which is why I'm an athlete. And also, yeah. or you read if you can't watch TV and my mother totally. didn't want us to watch TV. So I was a big reader. Um, and I really, really liked his writing it's yeah. not it's not just shot you know trying to scare you it's no characters characters yeah background yeah. i just remember something and about everything was in new parties. england which that which yeah i i live now you were in then where it had to really mean something yes definitely uh i just remember the like um just details of like peanut butter does it something about a peanut butter sandwich that <laughs> Arnie's mother makes for him or something, you know, things that are yeah. just these details. So I really liked the book. Okay. Um, yeah. But it but sure just, deviates at some point in time. I mean, it would have to, right? So I don't know if you remember the, the differences yeah. and things. I don't. Okay. I don't remember the differences. Um, no. Uh, yeah. So that's okay. I, was just, I, <laughs> I need to read it. So I, that's on my hit list. So, um, I mean, there's been some criticism that that we all look too old, or at least some of us, like uh, that uh, the guys, some of the guys look too old, like Buddy, the bad guy. Yeah, I was going to say he definitely, well, they started doing that. None are 2 no one looked like you were young and, you know, you look like fresh faced, but some of those guys definitely look like they're in their mid 20s. 
and yeah. play, but it, yeah. it works though. You know, they looked at him. They may, they may have done on purpose. Maybe he failed four times. Who well, knows? he did fail a lot. <laughs> well, yes, there you go. That character did uh, yeah. for sure. Um, I, Bill who played Buddy Repertin, who's that character who people say look too old. He says that um, his agent said, Hey, they're looking for someone who looks really dumb. Can you go into this? <laughs> can you, can you audition for this part? Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so kinda, I, I was, I was, uh, oh. I was happy to get the part, but I have to tell you, Kelly Preston is in this movie. She I is, know. I, yes, please. She is so lovely in it. So. She plays the popular sweet girl who has a crush on John Stockwell, who plays the athlete, the athlete, the opposite of Keith Gordon's character, Arnie. Yep. And she kind of pines after him and I'm the new girl and Stockwell kind of likes me. And so I always thought when I was doing that movie, like, why didn't they cast Kelly as the lead girl? She's just so pretty and so lovely. And I, I had that real insecurity throughout. And, and it's interesting. I think I had that, that real insecurity up until I started shooting Baywatch when I was plunked in with lots of beautiful, blonde, yeah. bodacious Pamela girls. Anderson, here you go. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And, and then I realized, oh no, everybody's different. And I have my own thing. Yeah. And I actually, so- I actually got it, like why they cast me. It doesn't always have to be a beautiful, bodacious blonde. There are other yep. types of folks. And so I did get that part partly because I had an innocence about me, partly probably because I was from New England yeah. and hadn't been exposed to lots of, you know, I don't know, makeup, boys, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. it comes through. I mean, yes, you just look innocent nothing's affecting you i'm sure preston could have done a great job as well and she's great in the movie she but that, it was really well cast really quickly on buddy when you as you mentioned that and talking about him for a second those guys all the hoodlums kind of look like sweat hogs but then they go dark remember sweat hogs from walking back Carter? Oh, the yes, way they well, dress i was like are these guys sweat hogs and it's like no no but they're the darker sweet. darker version of that well i didn't yeah. mean to butcher his name earlier because i'm a huge fan but i've got a pile of notes and i was like oh but keith gordon i have loved his acting not only in this is arnie cunningham but Jaws 2, Dress to Kill, Back to School. And then he becomes a director, as you know, and does movies like The Chocolate War, Midnight Clear, Waking the Dead. Uh, amazing. He wrote those, two. Great. Yeah. He wrote those two. I mean, he's He wrote those first talented. two, yeah. And, but, and let me tell you something. Please. He's one of the nicest people you will ever meet. You just Love get him. it from him. Yeah. Like, we hadn't seen each other for, I don't know, maybe 10 years or something, and I'm on... I'm in LA, in West LA, and I'm registering voters because I used to register voters. I oh, registered nice. voters once a week on this on the street corner for 18 years. And I'm registering voters and Keith comes up. He's like, hey, <laughs> and we talk and and it and it's just like his and so I've seen and I've been in contact with him since, you know, and been wow. to his house and all that stuff. Just I remember thinking, he is so lovely. It just is. You, you can't you can't get over I love it do people look at you guys when you're together does it blow their minds like hang on a second it's arnie and lee what's going on here <laughs> i, <don't laughs> I would be so my long. mind would have been blown hold on <laughs> hang on a second That's and funny. then there's john stockwell who is great as dennis golder uh he's in lots of movies as well losing it eddie and the cruisers top gun two Tom Cruise movies there. And he becomes a director. Crazy, beautiful, blue crush, into the blue. So it's funny how- Rockstar. I, I think he also wrote Rockstar. Rockstar, with, yeah. yeah. I could have went on and on and on. I was trying to limit it. But no, these oh, it's like prolific talent. guys, talent. Yeah. Here's And they're young as well. You probably were younger than them. But here's this young, I mean, casting goes a long way. And you've mentioned Kelly Preston, which, yes, yeah. rest in peace. We lost her in 2020 at I know. very young age. I know that gets redundant, but 57, it was really sad. And, of course, she marries John Travolta, but she was the it girl for a while. After this movie comes out, she is more of the leading lady in Mischief and Secret Admirer, Space Camp, so many more. And I have to listen, mention two other actors who I thought killed it in this movie. We've lost them both. They were a bit older. Oh. Robert. Prosky plays Darnell. Yep. My gosh, he he kills every scene he's in. He we lost him uh 
rest in peace, 2008 at 77. But he's in movies like iconic movies, Broadcast News, Mrs. Doubtfire. I loved him in Rudy. And then Harry Dean Stanton, former Oklahoman. That's actually where I was born. So before I moved. Oh, yes. He plays Junkins, the cop, you know, figuring things out. He's so good at that role. We lost him in 2017 at 91. Rest in peace. Alien. Paris, Texas, Pretty in Pink, just to name a few. So, and and then there's yourself. Like this thing was loaded. There's a reason why this movie holds up today. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned one more person. First name yeah. is Christine. Last name Belford. Regina oh, yeah. Cunningham. Also amazing in this. Really, yeah. go and back and about, watch it. Wow, she's very, she's really good. And you know they're doing a, um, they're doing a, there's supposedly remaking christine so uh i don't know how i feel about this yeah it's uh i forgot who's directing it well if it's in good hands yeah i I think think it's in good hands um i think it's his name is brian and he's done a lot of stuff and i can't remember his last name sorry brian but he's done a lot of stuff and i think it is in good hands if he has some respect for the original and maybe puts some of us in as like I would love to play the part of just putting myself out there. Be of Christine, the Christine or, or, or Regina. Play. Yeah. Be Regina, Regina the mom. Yes, the mom. Mm-hmm. Or, like or something that. that befits somebody my age trying to, you know, maybe I like that. I didn't know that, uh, Alexander. That's exciting news. Sometimes I get a little hesitant and then I think, hang on, Jason, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the one from the 70s that I love, was a remake. Yeah, the Fly, David Cronenberg's Fly was a remake. So oh. sometimes it can come around late enough and be its own thing and not trying to, you know, recreate it. And so in good hands, I- I'm going to yeah, hold Yeah, the judgment. question I think is what what is Christine going to be? I, I now, think they don't Christine? want her to be a 50, 57 Plymouth Fury or 50. Was she 57 or 58? I, it's, I have that. I have that in my notes. I think it's a 58. 58. So, 58. Yeah. Uh, is it going to be a 58 Plymouth Fury? I, I've, the scuttlebutt is no. That yeah. It's going to be a It'll be an 87 car. Honda Accord. And they're just going <laughs> to. <laughs> that's right. That's, right. Love, that's well, the actually, Christine I want to see. No. Um, speaking really. of which, and I, um, Robert's Blossom was also in this, who's yes. an actor. Who yes. did, he plays, he's in the, the beginning and he yeah. is the crotchety guy who sells oh, Christine to, to, to our, the character of Arnie. So yeah, he, he also was terrific in the movie. Oh, and... he, he steals every scene he's in. You don't know what you're talking about, boy. He's always just so mad. The outfit he's got on, he's got the hunch going. I love that actor. He was in movies like Vision Quest. And I don't know if he's still with us or not, but no, that guy he's not. He, he, it. he died not too long ago, interestingly, even though he looks like he's on Death Door and Christine. Makeup. Um, it's good makeup on that yeah, set. <laughs> yeah, he's um he didn't die too long ago. So yeah. I tried to get him to come to a signing, you know, an autograph signing where all the cast were together. Oh. And I went to his house and dropped a letter off because, you know, he wasn't on email or anything. And you I, went I, old I don't school. Know if he you didn't even it. mail yeah. it. You just dropped it off. I like that. Yeah, he lived not too far from me. So anyway. I yeah. don't even know his address. I just know where it's at. Let me go take this <laughs> over there. <laughs> you did grow up in the country. <laughs> I like well, that. Also, the cars in Christine for people. Now, I didn't know this because when you're shooting in 1982, I think. Yeah. 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 No, wait. That's we right. shot in '83. Sorry. Because it came out in came December. Out. Well, that it was came fast. out in December. We shot in. I remember that we shot like April, May, June, kind of thing, that like that. Okay. Um, so um, the cars were like. I guess they. I don't know if they were cool then, but they're cool now. The car John Stockwell drove was. Oh well, yeah. Like, tell me because. Oh no. People love it. He's the got a great car, and, and Buddy everybody. has another Plymouth. Like he's got a car very similar to Christine. Oh, does he? I, yeah. Oh, a huge but I don't know boat, he, right? Yeah, you. But yeah, exactly. And then there's an old caddy when when uh, Arnie's driving, you know, Darnell's caddy around sometimes when he leaves Christine's. So, yeah, they did a very good job. But these, these, all of these cars are popular now. In fact, I have a friend. Well, one of my co-hosts on two of our shows. He's a well collector, right? Like collects to- uh, merchandise toys and just for because coll- he loves it and he's got a christine car there like it's iconic for sure yeah. but i even read i'll save that for trivia well i'll save that for trivia because you also have an amazing trivia that i know i saw in the dvd extras i was like oh my gosh what a story but i'll save that what 
it? Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll On know. The DVD. Oh, when my I, gosh. Well, I, I know the answers you, to my own trivia. You know the answer. You're going to know the answer. So why don't we play this trailer? I can only find oh, as yeah. far as HD. It's only a minute. It's not like the trailers today that give a lot away. And it'll kind of set the tone for anybody watching or at least listening. You can kind of feel a little of the energy of the tone of the movie. So bear with me. Let me fire this up. Okay. Yay. Yay. <laughs> What do you mean came back? I'm sorry, honey, I can't. I know you're jealous. Your kitten's cut in half, aren't it? Riot is over. I knew a guy had a car like that once and killed himself in it. So good. I'm telling you, that score, there's that John Carpenter score. Don, 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 don. So, I couldn't hear the music. I couldn't hear the music. Oh, just, you didn't just hear the dialogue. Why is that? You know what? Sometimes, and I didn't know if that was going to work or not. Sometimes oh. piping it through this way, it blocks the, the score. So listen, oh, that's weird, I'm I not going to say anything. Anyway, no disrespect yeah. to YouTube or anybody, but sometimes that can happen. Oh, I'll have right. it. The audio version that comes out, will have it laid in. So okay. uh, real short though. It's like a little mini montage. Like th this is a trailer. I don't think it was the original trailer I was looking, but um yeah, and then one thing we haven't even talked about are some of the effects when Christine starts to like come back together. Like those shots are incredible for the time even. This day and age when they remake Christine, I'm sure it'll be all CG. But however they did that, I think they did a lot of it in reverse, like, you know, played it backwards and that like the dents come out and things. As a kid, that blew our minds. <laughs> it was just you like- You know, it's, you're you're right that there, it wasn't CGI and it was, um, they would be practicing a lot because they needed- so for folks who haven't seen the movie yet, the car regenerates. Yeah. And to do that, what they did was they made everything like uh, either rubber or no, it, well, it couldn't have been rubber, but it was like a soft material yeah. that they filled with air and then they would suck it in. So it looked like it had been oh, smashed Yeah, that... and then they would blow it out so and it would look like it regenerates. So yeah. I don't even, is that reverse? That's not they didn't even need to. No, not, not on that technique. No, that wouldn't be. I just yeah. read one thing, but that is fast. Well, you were there. That's incredible. And so it was hydraulics and air and stuff. So it wasn't any CGI. No, it was all, hey, folks, you know, yeah. it's, you had to be really skilled and imaginative. Uh, <laughs> and after after uh, one of my favorite movies, and I got to meet the director years ago, we saw my first documentary, and uh, it was like a moment uh, that I never thought I'd have. But an American werewolf in London, John Landis, oh, yeah. that transformation scene that he did with when he becomes a werewolf just in broad light. And they showed the whole thing. He hadn't seen that. It was always like cloak and dagger in the shadow, someone becoming a werewolf. And once they did it, it was like, oh no. And that wasn't CG either. And Christine has a lot of those scenes, like just restores itself, itself right there in front of everybody. And I, yeah, I didn't understand it, but it was a marvel to look at. And it still holds up. Like, it's not like, oh, it's so dated. Yeah. No, those effects work forever. And that's the beauty. That's the difference. You can't, you know, call it out. Well, I know we kind of talked about lots of things already, but how exactly did you land the role of Lee Cabot? I mean, New Englander, been in some things, but Delivery Boy, Paper Delivery Boy, what was the name of that one? The, the, oh, the Paper Boy came later. Paper no, Boy no, came no. Late. I okay. had only been in... um Paper Dolls, and I had shot one movie with Christy McNichol and Michael Onkin right. had it for MGM yeah. called I Won't Dance. I think they changed it to some, they changed the name of it, but um, it's just the way you are, it ended up being. But okay. we shot half of it, and then it had to be shut down because uh, Christy McNichol was, got sick, and so we had oh, to go wow. back. We went back the next year and finished it, but during wow. that time, I shot Christine. So, yeah. Okay. So I hadn't come out. You didn't have that behind. So how to, Hey, this is great. 
you're a high schooler, you know, go audition. And then was it just like all these other actors were there with you? Like, oh yeah, that would be, you know, what was that process like essentially? You know, I, I remember that they were looking, I think, for somebody unknown Fresh and they face. wanted okay. an innocence and they wanted someone who was young. And I looked younger. I was 19. I was out of high school, but I looked younger. Yeah. Um. So I went in and I auditioned. And then when back then you auditioned in person the first time. Now it, it's graduated to you put yourself on tape and then send it in. Sure. But then you auditioned. And maybe you just auditioned for the casting director. And then the next time you went in, you auditioned for the casting director and the director. And then the, then the third time, the producer. <laughs> oh, right. la, 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 la. But anyway, I do what I do recall was that the last time I was going in, when they narrowed it down to, I guess, maybe a few women, a couple, yeah. um, <laughs> the casting director told my agent, tell her to do something with her hair. Because I didn't know, I mean, I didn't wear any makeup. I had been a model, but that they do your hair for you. So I yeah. wasn't very good at that. So I asked my roommate, Mary, I said, can you help me with wow. making my hair look better? Because she used mousse. So I figured, well, she that's it. She's mousse. got the body. <laughs> yeah, okay. She knows something. So she taught me how to put curlers in my hair, right? But the problem was she was going to UCLA. The day of my last audition, screen oh. test, essentially, um, she, she had, she had exams. So I showered and put the curlers in my hair and then I drove over from, uh, I lived in Westwood and then I drove over to uh, the Valley, um, studio yep. city to go audition in studio city on Ventura Boulevard. And I parked the car about a, a block away from where I was auditioning and took out my curlers just so my hair would be extra fluffy. Um, no. <laughs> I that had made it. a major mistake. I had, when I took out my curlers, my hair was stick straight because I hadn't dried it first. Oh, it had been wet. Gosh. And so my hair was still wet. So I hadn't taken, because Mary had forgot, I guess she thought, well, uh, duh, <laughs> I hadn't realized that. So, um, well, you yeah, did do something different straight. with your hair. You did yeah, do that. Yeah, I guess so. so. I walked in I, and I immediately apologized to my hair. And I bet you John Carpenter didn't care at all about yeah. hair. That wasn't what he was looking for. And it was pro it was still wet probably because it had been in curlers. And so I guess my audition was good enough that yeah. uh, they they cast me. Yeah. Well, great hair in the movie, I got to say. So they you got the right team. Oh, my God. You. So much hair. It's, I'm like, I'm all hair and cheeks and eyes. It's just, <laughs> oh my God. It yeah, is big true. Hair. <laughs> it is true. So any memorable scenes with other actors or even Christine on the set before we get into some, some specific scenes that I have, but anything stand out? I mean, you're working with this car, you know, it's a possessed car. You're in some scenes with Christine and you have this hatred. Your, your character does, but anything stand out about that process? You know, I didn't care about cars at all. And so I, I didn't have any appreciation for the car or anything like that. Like, okay. so it's probably helped me in my acting that this, what is all this fuss about this yeah. car? Yeah. I think I say, God, I hate this car and hit the seat, which <laughs> upsets Arnie, yeah, who Arnie. Was my boyfriend at that point. Um, but yeah, I mean, I remember that we shot quite a few nights I remember, I'll tell you what I do remember is that when we shot in that warehouse, it was in, in a city of industry, which yeah. is this awful, I'm oh, sorry, I don't know if it's awful, but it's full of just those warehouses. warehouses. <laughs> warehouses. And I don't yeah. think anybody lives there. It's maybe population 52, even though it's probably 10 square miles, but um, it's a long way. And I, I got, I, I, there was one night where, or afternoon, because you drove there in the afternoon and then you'd shoot all night and drive back in the morning, where I got a speeding ticket and, and Stockwell got two on the way. So it was, um, yeah, two. Funny that's that, classic. <laughs> we on the same that's day. You guys stop. needed drivers. <laughs> yeah, 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 we did, but no, 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 we weren't big enough then. Not yet, not yet, so, not yeah. yet. Yeah. Well, I also like how they made up a city for the movie, Rockbridge, California. I like that. They couldn't just put Pasadena. They got to make up a city, right. but it kind of works. Right. And then I right. noticed that some speaking of locations, you're in city of industry. The high schools were Van Nuys. Football scenes were at Calabasas. Lee's home, your house was in Monrovia. Dennis's was in Hollywood and Arnie's was in South Pasadena. So you really were all over the place. They just, which I'm happy they filmed in California because they did that in the eighties, like the karate kid movies. It was very authentic, but they did spread it all over the place. 
because it's not easy to commute and move film teams and companies that far. So um, yeah, a lot of ground to cover there. And I've actually so been they by- say, I've forgotten, did they say that it was, as you said, Rockbridge, California? That's what it says. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I don't know if we ever just, it was ever actually just, you know, mentioned that it was California because the film was set, the book was set in New England, as you said. So that yeah. was one major difference. Yeah, um, exactly. But yeah, but it was nice because those places are very suburbia and it has oh, a yeah. very, it, you know, looking at it, <clears throat> it doesn't look super dated. No. Uh, to me. At all. And I don't know, you can tell me, but because, I don't know, maybe our clothes have gone back to the, the eighties or something, but no. Yeah. It was the eighties. It was itself. Right. Yeah. But, it was, but it's pretending it, it said there's a time stamp in the very beginning, not when they're in Detroit, but I mean, you know, present day for you guys was September. Uh -huh. Well, the first day was September 12th, 1978. So we are pretending oh. it's the seventies. Okay. So we were, we were five years shooting five years. Later. Exactly. Yeah. And we're yeah, okay. and behind and, you know, some of the clothing, I get it, you know, buddy and his team and the jock, you know, St Stockwell wears normal nondescript things. Right. But the cars yeah. spoke the years. It's like, ah, here we go. Yeah. But it, right. but it did, it's dated in the right way. It holds up. I mean, these houses are great too. I, I've actually gone by Arnie's house. I didn't go in. In fact, you don't, I don't, you don't even have a scene there that I recall unless it was cut out, No, no. but I've drove I, by I one day and it looks the same. And this was, you know, five years ago, I was on my scooter. I was like, I'm going to go by. Cause you know, there's a lot of houses in South Pasadena, Pee Wee from Pee Wee's, you know, big adventure and a teen wolf house and a Halloween house, all these houses. And I go by, it's like, oh my gosh, it's just like the movie overgrown trees, hidden the way that, that felt the, the way the house is tucked in. It really works. They did a good job of locations essentially is what I'm trying to say here. Okay. Very, very good job. But I didn't yeah. understand the stamps. I thought it was interesting choice because this transformation arnie's transformation happens over a short period of time it's just a few months doesn't take yeah. long for christine to put her hooks in you but so we don't get a day but you just get a month goes by it's like october november and then it just resolves itself so i was interesting because i guess i just want to show some passage of time it's a nice a nice choice i also love before buying christine this is great. Dennis's character says, your funeral, man. Spot oh. on there. <laughs> like these right, things stand exactly. out when I watched it yesterday, like, oh, wow, right there. There it is. You know, uh, don't buy this car. Uh -huh. And then well, it, my favorite, my favorite line. Oh, yeah. Well, I. My favorite line about with, that has to do with me, 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 um, is uh, when Doug, the actor Doug Warhit when I first walk into the school. Yes. And I think this is my first scene actually, which I didn't have any lines. I just have to look like wide eyed and innocent. Yeah, coming down uh, the hall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Doug Warhead's character goes to Stockwell. She looks smart, but she's got the body of a slut. And he says it so perfectly. He says, and he's my friend to this day. It was oh, his birthday wow. last week and I emailed wow. him and he called me and la la la. But um, he, uh, and he he was 28 at the time, actually speaking, but he looked like he could be in yeah. high school, yeah. actually. Um, and I just love that because, yeah, I'd always sort of equated myself as being smart because being good in school was important to me and I sure. was good in school, but the body of a slut, I mean, that's hilarious. That's that, what a, that's what a teenage boy would say because any girl looks like they would have the body of a slut because I did not have the body of a slut at all. <laughs> um, or the demeanor, of course, too. But that's what makes it so funny. Anyway, that is I, love, I love that line because no one said, wow, look at her body. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I like that line, too. I wasn't going to bring it up. So I'm glad that you did it. It is hilarious. <laughs> and then right after that, one of the few lines we get out of Kelly Preston, because she's more, like you said, just she's got eyes you know, for, mm -hmm. for Dennis. And she's always looking, and Dennis is looking over her to, to look at you, but she bust out TTFN. Yeah. Tata for now, which does it, did it originate here? Did, Cause I did, he, I never used this phrase. I would probably get punched, but uh, people did. And I was like, I wonder if it spawned from this book or the movie, but whatever, there was a nice little know. moment. It might've been a Valley girl kind of thing. Totally Valley girl. I should go back yeah. and watch that movie. Yeah. Now some other scenes, you know, there's a little bit of questions like, would you, Lee, you, not you, your character, Lee, fall for Arnie? You know, it's like, well, 
where is he at in that train? You never met Arnie, the totally innocent nerd. You met him on part of that plight. So where was that where you found him attractive in a way? Maybe he was just confident, something. But obviously, I'm sure audiences always think, well, well why doesn't she like Dennis? Like, that's an, that's an obvious connection. I know it's not how the book of the story goes. But as you... As an actor getting into it, do you think like, yeah, this is Bible. This is plausible. She would fall for this guy. And not only fall, like she really gets head over heels for him as he's changing, as, he, as the dial, as he's going up to 11 and really changing. What was your thoughts of the of that? Is it is it believable? Um, I, you know, I was a lot taller than him, too. I think there's a scene yeah. where we're yes. kissing next to the <laughs> yeah. truck car and I'm tall. And gosh, yeah. I have to say I was really insecure. I mean, I think all 19 year old girls and boys are probably yes, not, yes. right. All teenagers, yes. we can admit it now that we're yeah, older. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> I was really insecure about being like big, tall, tall, and, right. You know, and I, and I was slender, but I wasn't thin. I was nor, I think I was normal. I don't know. It's like, I wasn't fat by any means, by the way, but, I, but being, being with a man, a boy who's smaller than you, that, that always makes a woman more insecure. So Interesting. I, I don't know if physically, I mean, I've never been one of those people that goes, Oh, he's so tall. I don't know why I never cared about height in a guy at right. all. But um, I just remember seeing that, that kissing scene, uh, a still from it and thinking, wow, we do look like an odd couple. Um, you know, yeah, um, definitely. even though, you know, uh, he looks handsome in his dark, all dark. And oh yeah, when he starts to change, and yeah, stuff. exactly. Yeah, um, and she's a smart girl, and he's, you know, and he's nice in the beginning. So I, I can see why she might be attracted to him rather than, you know, the jocks. Or he got to you first, which I got to say, some of that is a great reveal because we don't know that Arnie's been talking to Lee. We just know that Dennis asked her out in the library and she's like, oh, I've already got a date, you know, blah, blah, blah. But we don't know until the football game and you pull up in Christine. That was a wonderful reveal. Like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, he's changing. He's got calm. This guy couldn't talk to a girl. Now he's taking the pretty new, new girl. girl. Yeah. To the football game it's like wow that says it a, a lot right there yeah. yeah hey being a male I, once in my teens insecure for sure it takes us a long a lot longer alexander to grow up trust me on that yes it does no i know your prefrontal cortex doesn't develop that's doesn't. until 20 25 that's why that's why nobody can drive drive a car or exactly. rent a car until they're 25, 25. Of males <laughs> not because of us females so. i'm shocked they give driver's licenses away so young like i'm what yeah. i sound like an old guy now like what is 18 <laughs> what, what are these kids I, it's it's true but i do sound that way for sure uh, well, okay, well that's why they lowered by the way as a I told yeah. you, I register voters that's oh, yes, why yes. they lowered the voting age because they it used to be 21 in the 70s and before yep. but i think but when in the 60s and and then sometime in the 70s or 80s they lowered it because they realized they were drafting young men who couldn't even who vote. couldn't even vote exactly and that was wrong so you know my opinion they should have just raised everything and drafted y'all later yeah. us all i suppose women weren't being drafted then but this is uh you know i like but, the y'all in there that kind of reminds me of my oklahoma roots there i say <laughs> you all only because i, I was like i am you know, I, I did date somebody from Texas for a long time. Actually, okay. it was in Christine, interestingly. Um, but uh, I well, who? see you all. Who? Can you, you share? Guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can. Um, it was so long ago. I've been married to my beloved 27 years. So oh, I my talk gosh. About all, he doesn't mind at all. He's not threatened by anything because he knows how much we love each other. Um, so, uh, well, oh, so I say y'all because you guys. I hate that be yeah. because there's often a woman in the room and she's not a guy. I'm yeah. sorry. So I say, y'all. Um, Our, every, everyone would work. <laughs> everyone. Yes. Everyone. Where I'm from, it was y'all yeah, for sure. They love y'all. They'd love it. Uh, yeah. I guess so who so. is the guy? Can you, can you divulge? Um, Barry Tubb. Okay. Uh, who who is in, play? who's, uh, he, well, you would hardly have known him. Um, he was the quarterback in the, on the other team, I think. Oh. On the other football team during the, the, that football that, game. That scene, okay. And uh, we didn't date till, let's see, 19. We started dating in 88, I okay. think 88 for two and a half years. Um, but 
he was in uh, Top Gun. He played cowboy in Top Gun. Oh, wow. Because he, he was a Texan. Okay. A Texas girl. And then you got so Stockwell anyway. playing Cougar. This is crazy. It's all Yes, connected. right. It's so incestuous. And it, it Stockwell was is. dating Ray, Ray Don. No. He was, was he? he dating Ray Don Chong. Ray Don Chong? Time that, that we were shooting Christine. American Flighters. Oh, And then Christine. I worked with her on Christine. And, okay, oh, I'm my. giving you up this. Go, go, please. I love Back. this. <laughs> And that football game was the was the day that but um, William Ostrander, who played Buddy Reperton, asked me out and we dated for two and a half years. Get so out shooting, of here. Yeah, it was. I don't know if it was. I think it was. Well, maybe that football scene. Took he was a little bit older day. than you, Alexandra. I got to say, your, your mom probably didn't approve of that so much. <laughs> He was only a couple of years older, actually. Oh, he was playing 28. He wasn't 28. He was, uh, I thought he was uh, older. Uh, no, Bill, no, um, Bill Ostrander played yeah. Buddy Reperton. He was supposed to play, uh, yeah, he wasn't supposed to play. Oh, today. not you didn't date him. Bill. Okay, sorry. Okay. No, I dated, I dated him. I dated okay. him. I didn't date Doug Warhit, who's my friend, who's who it, was right. 28. Yeah. And it was, uh, when you told me he was 28, I just assumed that Buddy, <laughs> yeah, okay, got it. He went, yeah, no, he just Buddy over. was 25 yeah. at the time. Yes. Yeah, so he, he had a good look. Did he go on and do, I didn't look him up. I, I know all these other actors, but Buddy was like, I said, he had a good look and he really nailed that role. Did he have other successes that? He went on to do some movies and like, independent movies and the okay. series north south oh yeah you know okay in, but then he retired and went to uh i still see him because you know we go to autograph signings and things and love it so we're, yeah we're friendly and everything he's got he's got a wonderful uh wife and he um moved to northern california and he's a farmer and yeah he's a farmer oh, wow. and and also he ran for political office uh, as a congressman for a congressman that's yeah so he's had he's been very busy that's great well yeah. didn't mean to put some ages on him sorry no, no not trying to throw the years on him there my bad. i think he's just a couple of years older than yeah I. yeah i'm not sure he might be yeah three to five or something <laughs> so the, there's this great scene in the movie terrifying i should add but the choking scene at the drive-in in christine what you're doing how hard was that to film? That's a pretty. Oh my god! Scene. All right, so Carpenter kept saying, "Do more," and I was like, "It looks fake." He's like, "Do more. I don't care if it looks fake. Open your eyes. Bug them out." Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, so I just did it as much as I can. I just followed what the director said. He's the director, so. Well, it was yeah. believable, and it's oh, hard to watch. Oh, was it really? Okay, yeah. Yeah. and it goes on and on because oh Arnie's he, he's he's staying at his door. It's like, no, how long can she choke like that? Like that was pretty. <laughs> and then the I guess it lit up. You got the music on. It just... yeah, and then he shot it from above. I think yeah. like throwing my head back. Uh, that's funny. A, yeah, a, and... a, you know, a stander by the person next door opens the door and gives you the Heimlich. That was like wow, very intense. Yeah, but into the rain yeah. and and by the way, I was a vegetarian, so I wouldn't eat a hot. I wouldn't eat a hamburger, so I just <laughs> pushed the hamburger back because they didn't really have veg, veggie burgers. weren't really a thing no. much then. It would have been really a diva move if I said I really want a veggie burger in there instead of a hamburger. I couldn't do that. I was too too young. Now I can, but um, and so I just pushed the burger back and just I bread. So choking on bun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it was interesting that we only meet. Arnie's parents and Dennis's sister. There's no other, like, besides the people I mentioned earlier, but there's no, like, figure, a like, guardian in that way. We, we show you at your house on the phone, tight shots, but there is yeah. that great shot of the light coming on when Arnie and you are saying goodbye and he's on the front porch. And yes. that represents your parents. And that's all you need. Like, that's smart filmmaking. Great choice. But I, I was like, did they shoot scenes? Did you shoot scenes with parents? Did you have parents? Or it was never, it was just really deliberate that you didn't have them. I mean, I mean we just didn't see them. Yeah, we didn't see them. No, I don't think we needed to. No, um, no. But because uh, she's really, she's really just a device to compare with, to to show Arnie's change because she reacts to his changes and things. Yeah. And that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as the girlfriend, you know, those you are more than a device. Alexander. Oh, well, thank you. But, thank you. But, but there's a lot right. of, 
Because he, he totally dismisses Dennis. Like, I haven't talked to him in forever. And then we put Dennis in the hospital. You know, <laughs> like, well, that's random. He's just right. in the hospital for right. a long time. But you're always there. You're seeing the change. And his parents are seeing the change. And they're shocked. And some of those scenes with him and his parents was like, I mean, I thought the mother was great. The dad had that one great scene where he pushes him and then he, like, you know, puts the death grip on him. It's like, wow. And seeing him in the beginning of the movie, like, how far is this going to go? This guy is scary now. But, yeah. But you're right. You were there, part device, but it, <laughs> it, it, it paid off. We need. I played, yeah, I played the normal. I mean, Stockwell yeah. did too, but we played sort of like, you know, the popular girl. I mean, I guess. Kelly was the popular girl, but I was you know, the new girl. The new girl. And then um, Stockwell was the jock who yeah. befriend, who who's best friends with Arnie, which can sometimes happen. Um, yeah, they may have but, grown up together. I was thinking yeah. about that. Like, how is this super popular guy? with you? Well, they were in probably kindergarten together and middle school, and they, mm -hmm. they just developed that friendship. And that happens a lot. So that was- And then believable. in high school, yeah, the-, the, the People go off, starts. yeah. 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 Well, what was it like shooting that? climactic ending sequence with you and Dennis versus Arnie and Christine. Like that mm -hmm. was pretty intense city of industry, of course, end of the movie, you know, it's the end of the movie. There's a lot of mashing of Christine, but a lot of physicality as well. Right. Or did you have a stunt person come in? Cause you're, you're running for your life in some sequences. <laughs> yeah. I had a stunt person for at least one of the scenes. Uh, and okay. that was when I think I have to um, jump up and, hold on to some gr something that's in yeah. the, in this industrial warehouse and and then christine goes under me or something like that I, yeah. I you probably remember it more than i but i didn't have to do that okay good but otherwise <laughs> i did all the running around and uh and i'm not crazy about those scenes i like to do talk as an actress i like to do even though i'm an athlete i prefer to do scenes that uh, where we talk are we discussing? Yeah, not running from a car, a deadly yeah, machine. Yeah, and I've done a lot of running away as the woman yeah, in Baywatch. peril kind of thing. Well, I liked Baywatch because I was running towards somebody and saving them. Saving them, yes. But in the, I did, you know, I starred in at least 15 movies on Lifetime. And I was always, even though in the end I vanquished the bad person, I was always running from them at some point and I wow. and with a gun and I always hated those, yeah. that part. I mean, I didn't hate it, but I would not like it as much as using my acting chops to relate to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> well, it works here. And I, I got to give you guys the characters like total props that they were that brave. They know what they're going to face and they didn't come with the cops. They didn't reach out to Harry Dean Stanton. They have a plan and they go fire up the you know the bulldozer, and it's like wow, that's that that was uh, it works though it really works because it makes it more intense because we care for both of you. By now, Arnie's kind of uh, as as an audience, it's like yeah, he's churned. We care for Lee and Dennis at this point in time. And as oh, well, another, teenagers, why would we go to adults? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We, what do they we can, know? We can do, do it. They know. We're don't, immortal. Don't tell Arnie's parent nobody. Let's just go take care of this ourselves. Yeah. And there was another great reveal to his detriment is when Arnie comes out of the windshield because he doesn't have a seatbelt on, but we didn't know, we didn't know for sure if he was driving because he wasn't driving when he took out the hoodlums. Christine kind of went off on her own because Arnie truly was like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about to the cop. So that was like, and I guess Carpenter painted the windows black. So you never really knew who was in there or not, or it's a super tent job, but that was a, amazing reveal because you weren't sure watching it like oh my god here he is he's to his death which is kind of weird that christine would let him go out of the windshield she loves him so much she probably would have seat pelted him in but you know it's a we need it for the movie we need uh, that closure i guess yes but, i think so um it was done on purpose that you didn't really know who was behind the wheel and actually terry leonard was the um uh uh how the stunt guy yeah. and he very respected stunt man and did some he did all the driving when the car was on oh, fire okay. yeah and oh. um that's really hard because you he couldn't see much when it was on fire and then he's inside driving and the car's on fire i mean this and he played also uh buddy repertin when buddy repertin was on fire that was terry leonard on the oh, ground yeah on the fire body. so yeah yeah 
Because we didn't use CGI. We use real people, folks. No, those sequences <laughs> with Christine on fire and, and the paint is like, it's all like a, the car's like blue. It's so hot. It's like blue glowing. That that was in the music. I'm t Those sequences are riveting and ca captivating. So if you haven't seen it in a while, Alexandra, I tell you to fire up Christine later. And, I should, <laughs> and give it I a should watch. because there's some things I didn't remember. Like I didn't remember that the, of the date and I didn't remember that they had, that it went from, you know, September, October, et cetera. Yeah. I, I had did not know, forgot that I really should, should, I don't watch myself in. Well, I understand. Sometimes I do only when I have to edit, like yeah. get a, a clip from something, but otherwise it's just, it's really painful for me to watch myself at 19. I have this little voice that uh, the sound people for years had to tell me, Alexandra, speak up because I had a little voice because I was a, you know, a girl and I thought I shouldn't be too much. Yeah. And um, so, you know, and I, I, yeah, I just think in acting wise, oh yeah, I could do that role so much better now. <laughs> I could. Well, you did great. Don't be hard <laughs> on yourself. Tell, trust me, trust me. Well, Christine ultimately is crushed into a cube at the salvage yard and we hear music which turns out to be a worker, a workman's jam box stereo. And you utter another great line, which is, do you remember? God, I hate rock and roll. That's <laughs> so great. You were right? up because everyone thought that's exactly right. Everyone thought, oh, that's Christine again. Cause she was always playing <clears throat> music, which was kind of copied in Transformers and Bumblebee, the way that Bumblebee would talk through music. But that was a really interesting choice too. They put on a song, which, you know, it, what like don't come well, knocking came from, or whatever was relevant. It was um bad to the bone. You mean well, for, yeah. The, uh, the beginning oh. was bad to the bone, but I mean throughout the movie, if the song was it'd be relevant to the scene. Like, oh right, right. Don't That's you come knocking? Like right whatever now. it was. Yeah, I forgot to mention that in the beginning. Bad to the bone. George Thorogood, great song. Blah, 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 bad. And when you saw it in Detroit, and it kills the, it crushes a guy's hand and then squashes another guy, kills him. We know this is a possessed car in production in Detroit, which winds up in California at this guy's, you know, which is interesting too, Alexander, that when they see Christine to buy it, Arnie buys it, it's broken down, doesn't fix itself. You know, it's just oh, dilapidated, yeah. I guess because its owner died, but it's like, yeah, I'm out, I'm done. And then it has a, you know. Maybe that's interesting. You're asking a lot of good questions. Right? Yeah, I, I know. I just wash it. So it's fresh in yeah. my mind. I hope, I hope, yeah, I hope it doesn't mean that they feel like it, the film has jumped the shark. Maybe in the book, it no. does say, explain yeah. why Christine was inspired to, she was revitalized by her love for Arnie. I think that's what it was. Like, okay. here, someone cares about me again. And yeah. so yeah. here we go. But, uh, and then, but the movie ends with that, Yes, you call it out. It wasn't the Christine. It was a jam box. But then we see a little bit of, you yeah. know, that little bit of movement in this cube. It's like, oh, my gosh. It's a great nah, ending. Nah, nah, nah. A great yeah. ending, which would have, you know, if it wasn't Carpenter, it was someone else in the studio said, that's it. You're in production on the sequel. Like that usually would happen. But he had some clout and he probably was not interested. I mean, he didn't do Halloween two, three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He moves on. But had, had there been a I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how well the the film did when it well, first came definitely, out, though. It was this, yeah, it maybe made not eight, at first. It, it cost $8 million, I think, I heard. But is that true? Do you know? Well, it made money. It definitely made, like, made well, the numbers on IMDb were, like, it made triple its money. So that's a success. Right. But maybe they were expecting, you know, franchise. Or Stephen King might not have allowed it. That's right. Yeah, there yeah. is no Christine II book, and I'm not going to let that happen. But let's just say that they did. And they pick things up right there and Christine comes back and we still have Lee and Dennis and the, those few players left. Do you think those two would wind up together? Lee and Dennis? Oh yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. That's what Definitely. I thought. I wanted to get your yeah. take. And so that's, that's how I feel. Okay. Definitely, yeah. So, I was, I was really intimidated by Stockwell though. Cause he was older. He yeah. was from the East coast too, but uh, I don't know. Just, I was, I was not, Keith had this warmth about him, but, uh, Stockwell didn't have that at warmth, I guess, towards me. And I don't know if it was personal to me, uh, cause he's a very nice man. There's certainly, um, yeah. 
but yeah, so I, it was probably me and my insecurity. Well, you had out. good chemistry on so, those scenes. I thought I really, I believed it. I was like, Oh, he, and he was really, he was much nicer in the role <laughs> than Arnie, but yeah, right, he right, was caring right. and he was already injured and he was looking out for you. And yeah, I, I saw some good chemistry going on there. So. Oh, good, good. Yeah, no, I liked him. And I, um, and I guess, yeah, I feel like I knew him that I had no, I couldn't have known him. It was only after that I saw him on, you know, with because of American Flyers and his girlfriend, Ray Dawn. That was it, I guess. Yeah. So how did you see the movie? Did you go to a big premiere or did you just see it when it came out or what was your experience on that? Oh, I went to the premiere and I was horrified. In fact, I think I walked <laughs> out early before I was so freaked out. And I remember Bill, you know, Bill Ostrander, who yep. played Buddy Robertson, coming out and being like, where, where, what's going on? I go, I can't stand seeing myself. I, I, I'm terrible. I'm this and that. And he was like, oh, my God. Boy. So, yeah, I remember. So you didn't enjoy it. I get it. Did you enjoy it? later on did you ever get a chance to watch it years later and just say oh you know what that's a, a or did you ever love did you even like the movie <laughs> oh yeah i really like the movie and i did okay. watch it years later um when i had to do the back you know the the, the blu-ray or the dvd yeah. or something and they asked me to comment on some of the scenes so yeah i did watch it before then yeah okay. I, I just i think the movie itself is wonderful and yeah, yeah i'm so glad i did it as am I and all of all of the fans out there who love oh. Christine. Yeah, you were definitely Lee Cabot. So here's some trivia. And again, like I mentioned, you're going to have the best one I read. So I did read that Kevin Bacon was offered the role of Arnie, but he chose to do Footloose instead. So I thought about that. Like, yeah, Bacon would have been good, but I don't wow. know. Keith Gordon was so good. I'm glad it was him. Yeah. And then That's I read so that. Oh, go on, oh, please. No, no, no please. go ahead. No, go ahead. You're probably going to say what I was going to say. No, I, I'm talking about another actor. So, I oh, oh, because it's funny because he, um, Kevin Bacon was also considered for the role of the lead uh, uh, in American Flyers. Really? Uh, alongside Cosner. So he was going to play my, I Your was going love interest. Yes. My love interest. And I remember Badham saying that he couldn't, He's glad he didn't cast Kevin because both of our noses were upturned. My my nose was more upturned when I was younger. I don't know. I have not had a nose job, but it now it's pretty straight, but it was pretty upturned. So you look like siblings or cousins. Yeah, we would have exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's funny. funny. I didn't know about I didn't know about Kevin Bacon. And I just know. read that. And then I read that Brooke Shields was considered for your role of Lee. Oh, it makes total sense, right? Yeah, She's got I get that. Sense. They were yeah. probably looking for Brooke Shields type. Yes. And they went and got a new face. That's ex you nailed it. So. That's probably it because I'm also tall. Yep. We actually, you know, do have some sort of features the same. And I got Brooke Shields hair. That's when it. I was on you the had set, that hair. <laughs> um, so she, boy, she's sweet though. I've met her in real life and she's really? super sweet. She would have been great in the role actually too. Yeah. So this is the one that you'll know. And I, you actually say it on the extra. So, but I'll let you take over, but so there was a story that you pranked John Carpenter with your I twin did. sister. So please, yeah. I want to hear you tell the story. Okay. So John Carpenter, he's a prankster and oh. he, he played a great prank on the producer, which was much better. Well, I don't know if it was much better than our prank, but it was a great prank. Um, the producer, or I can tell this story quickly. Okay. Please. Is that right? Okay. Yes, so of course. the producer, um, uh, Oh my God. Uh, um, Richard, Richard, uh, I've forgotten his last name right now. He's a wonderful person. I'll and, look him up. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, so he would, he'd come to the set in this really nice Porsche and he loved his Porsche oh, nice. and he would cover it every time with this, you know, oh, car yeah. cover and everything. So one day, um, while everybody was having lunch, Carpenter replaced that Porsche, got transpo to replace that Porsche with an old junker. And and then put the cover on again, and we were all having lunch. I wasn't there actually, so I'm just saying. I'm this is hearsay. This is it is Cobritz? Is that his name? Cobritz, yes, yeah, Richard okay. Cobritz. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so Cobritz and everybody and all the actors and, and Carpenter are sitting having lunch, and the cars parked nearby, and a bulldozer comes up and rolls the bulldozer <laughs> we use rolls over it, and Cobritz freaks out because he thinks his horse is under yeah. there, but it's not. It's an old uh, junker car. 
That's uh, a great prank. And, not, and very mean prank, but a great prank. <laughs> great prank. Well, on Christine, um, you, you're going to demolish cars, so you might exactly. as well. Uh, I love exactly. it. Exactly. So um, I, since I'd only been in Hollywood for a year, nobody knew, and there wasn't the internet where you could just look up somebody and find out all about them. And I have an t- identical twin sister, Caroline. And when we were in high school, we went to different boarding schools and I had gone and pretended I was she at her boarding school, but she'd never done it the same to me for some reason. And so when we were working on Christine, we thought, oh, let's pretend, let's have you pretend you're me on the set. Oh and so gosh. we got the makeup and hair and wardrobe people and Stockwell, because the scene was with Stockwell. Yeah. And we had her dressed up in my, you know, the, basically every, you always have two of or three, especially because we were doing stunts. This was the part, this was the, the, end, the scene. end scenes. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so we're all running around, not a lot of acting stuff. And so it's the first scene of the morning and um, Stockwell takes Caroline onto the set. So, so she knows where to go. And he's, he's like going whispering, like, okay, here comes the director. And so she's like, hello. And he, when John says hi in the morning and she gets up and she shoots a scene, it's not oh, a dialogue scene, gosh. but she shoots a scene uh, where uh, it's just of, of Lee's foot. And, and there's a great still of Carpenter looking up at her uh, when she's sitting in that cab and he's looking up really quizzically like, huh? And I asked him about that later when I saw that still, he goes, you know, when she said hello to me, it just, she sounded different. I thought you were sick. Cause you didn't sound, you were right. yourself. Your voice is a little, yes, yes. And I, yeah. And um, Caroline was probably trying to be all serious. She, she actually wrote a book. My sister is an author I and she wrote yes. a book yeah. called, I think it's, it wasn't called nearly famous. It was called like almost famous. It's a little book you can get on Amazon for, which is a movie in its own right, but that's yeah. Um, right. Yeah. But it movie. wasn't, yeah. yeah, it wasn't exactly that title, but if you look up, but it's about this, call, this thing when she, well, came... she recounts, she recounts that. Oh, how love it. She was trying to be all, all diva like because I was this, but she found out that oh no I wasn't a diva because everyone was so friendly and really really was friendly oh, and loving my. and liked me so much and that she, was, she, she writes it very funny anyway um so yeah that was that's the story is my sister oh. did fool John Carpenter uh the, the scene is in the movie that's what I read book. that's amazing yeah, yeah. he also there's a quote from John Carpenter it was like an evasion of the body snatchers and Alexandra was a pod person so he walked up and heard, probably heard something like that doesn't compute, but it looks like her. That's a really good prank because he didn't even oh. figure it out. Like what happened? Did you, did you pop out somewhere? Ta-da! Oh yes. I okay. forgot. The, the ending part was I walk out onto the set in the same clothes as my sister's wearing, oh. you know, with the same hair and makeup. Yeah. And I say to John, have you fired me already? And everyone's like, what? Because <laughs> they didn't great. know I had a twin sister. So oh, why would you think? Only a right? couple people, makeup and Stockwell. That was it, right? Everyone else didn't know. Oh, that's right. wonderful. Right. Oh, so, I'd love to see footage of that. So yeah, you were telling that story. I thought that's great. And how many people have a twin and to pull that off? So yeah, and exactly. it's in the movie. Well, not that uh-huh. sequence, but her foot, whatever. Her is, foot is, is in still in the movie. Yay. <laughs> so last couple of trivia here and we're wrapping up, but uh, you've been fantastic. Thanks for going extra with me today. Uh, Stephen King chose a 58 Plymouth Fury for Christine because it was a forgotten car. I didn't want a car with a legend attached to it like the 50 th- Thunderbird. So that makes total sense. You know, this was a car that not a lot of people are probably talking about. And then here it is. It, it's like very meta. Now this is a very popular car. The, uh, 50s Plymouth Fury. And so to that point, I have another slide here. So oh. there's Christine, right? Right. This was probably the shot when it was in Detroit on the factory line in the movie. Yeah. The production yeah. still. So then yeah. I realized as I was getting ready for this episode, I was like, oh my gosh, when I was at the Peterson Peterson Automotive Museum, I saw Christine. So, which is a great museum of those who don't know at 6060 Wilshire Boulevard, Los Angeles. 90036. So here is my photo of Christine. There's only oh. two left, and this is one of the two. And there's the side. Oh. And then this was, I read this and oh, I'm, I took a photo of it, but it talks about how it was one of like a lot of cars were torn up, as you know, and this mm-hmm. was one of two left, and it became 
that went to the museum forever. So, and there's the license plate, the CQB. Now, do you remember what that stands for, Alexandra? No. No, I don't. Did they talk about it? It's in the book, though, isn't it? It may be in the book. It was just online. So I was like, oh, okay, because it's oh. deliberate. It wasn't just, you know, circumstance or happenstance. It stands for close quarters battle. So there you have it. Oh, yeah. I have I had no idea. TV. What does that I mean? I didn't either. Just to, what happened at the end of the movie. It was it, oh, it, okay. It, it's it not some Christine. kind of military thing. It, it sounds... could be. It could yeah. be. I don't. I don't know. But I thought that's interesting that it meant something. So as I was perusing through these photos, I was there at the museum probably 2015, 2016. So literally, I cruised through. I was with the Back to the Future car. I come across Christine. The very next car that I swiped to was this, and I want to get your reaction to this. Do you recognize that? Yes, that's my kind of car. That is my kind of There's car. There's the back. This is the EV1. Yes, the EV1. I have. It's so it's so interesting because yeah, as I told you, I didn't care about cars. No. Uh, to me, they were polluting machines, but they got you to where you needed to go. And then along came the EV1. Boom. And which is for y'all, uh, for y'all. There it is again. Car. Yep. Yep. And well, uh, you're in the movie, the documentary, which I was, my mind was blown. I'm like, oh, the EV1. Let me look up Alexandra's credits. You're in the documentary, Who Killed the Electric Car? Yes, I've been driving electric cars for 33 years. I probably, oh. I would say that I might be the woman who's been driving electric cars longer than any other woman in uh, the United States, only because there are men like Ed Bagley Jr. Has I was going to say, I met him many times. He's my He's hero. Always, I used to watch him on Carson talking about it, like in the, I think it was 70s or early 80s. So yeah, he was in that yeah. lane, but you're right there. Yeah. Well, 1990 was my first car um, after the um, Exxon Valdez spilled. And I got all on my high horse about that car. I can't believe the Exxon Valdez spilled all that oil into the into the Alaskan waters. And uh, yeah. whoo, there I was driving a little GMC Jimmy, and I realized, oops, I'm the reason <laughs> that uh, <laughs> that tanker's out there. I better I better you know yeah. walk my talk. So yeah, I got I got my first electric car um, with actually Ed Bagley's help. He he recommended it, it got 25 miles per charge, and um, awesome. my first one. And then you know. I, I had got another better. one at 50 and then, and then the EV one got over a hundred and, and now I drive an electric car. Um, yeah. It gets over 300. So <laughs> I love it. I love when I saw Tesla come up, I had a leaf for a while. I had an electric scooter. I love riding my bicycles. Oh, so yay. I love it. And this documentary, have you made 10 docs myself? I was in the middle of my docs and this one came out and it, it really spoke to me. Chris Payne. I want to give him a shout out. The director, Martin Sheen narrates it. <laughs> Ed Begley Jr., Tom Hanks, and of course, you. Yes. You're all over it. Alexander yeah. Paul, phenomenal. So that was it. I had to end it with that because I was like, what are the odds that she's in this movie? <laughs> but, but thank you for going on this journey with us today, talking about Christine, things we didn't know. Now you're inspired to watch it with uh, your partner, your husband, and you guys can uh, don't be don't cringe. You're phenomenal in this movie. Oh my gosh. Well, let, we'll let your audience be the judge of that. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. And maybe next time, if you're up for it, we can do a deep dive on another movie. I love American flyers. You never know. Uh, okay. Yes. You let me know. You let okay. me know. You know how to find me. Yeah, so I do. thank you so much, Jason. I appreciate it. Oh, thank my you. pleasure. My pleasure. So without further ado, please enjoy. Christine. <laughs> well done <laughs> you did great i was gonna say the movie i know said, the movie you're gonna say the movie and alexander I... paul as <laughs> lee cabot yeah that's, <laughs> that's right. what that's i meant what I should what I have said. anyway okay great thank I'm you stopping. so much jason oh it was I'm, just, I'm sitting stop real fast thank you alexander i'll let you know when this goes out if you think of anything that you don't want in there but i, I think we're pretty safe i think we're no safe. we're fine we're fine Okay. That's fine. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Jason. Take care. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. You too.